so instead of the controller there was an issue where uh, if there were if there was a lot of uh, changes happening uh, to any of the bucket star resources uh, bucket resources um, then there was a chance of uh, concurrent map reads and writes um, so we fixed that it was just merged today uh, similarly uh, we've been making updates to uh, the provisioner and the controller where um, instead of the controller there, there was there was some um, yeah, we've been constantly making changes to the docs. Um, we 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 moved over from G log to K log in most of the implementations, and uh, there was there was a bug in here too that was fixed here. I can't remember what it was that I fixed. Um, I'm just looking at it to see if I remember it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. This this was an interesting case actually. So. Uh, in the, this is the bucket request controller where uh, after uh, the bucket request is created uh, on the controller uh, on the central controller this uh, bucket request uh, will be this bucket request listener will be listening for bucket request events and then if a new bucket request comes in with a ba valid bucket class um, or, or a default uh, then we respond by creating a bucket object and then once the creation uh, is done uh, we update uh, uh, the bucket request object itself uh, to have a reference to this bucket. So it's a two-step process. And between the first and second step, the controller can go down. Um, so this one fixes it such that uh, uh, even if the controller goes down, we don't end up in a situation where uh, uh, you know the second operation is never done. Um, so so that was one of the changes that was brought here. The same change needs to be carried out for the bucket access controller. It hasn't been done yet. So uh, anyways, this is just supposed to be a quick uh, intro to what we've been doing this week. Um, so uh, the development activity has gone up uh, in this week, uh, thanks to uh, a bunch of new members who've joined, uh, Krish especially. And uh, another thing that I noticed recently was uh, inside of the uh, provisioner sidecar, um, Shing, um, a new person has uh, added themselves to the Cozy project. Yeah, this one. And I don't know who this person is, but they have. Huh? Added to to where to? They have they have much privileges on Cozy. They've they've said. Was... Yeah. Um, may, was, uh... Yeah. But did the, you, you don't know this person? He added to Cozy? Yeah. So they've said their projects are Cozy related. I mean, the, the involvement is Cozy. Um, links to the projects. Is that right? Yeah. Did he do all of this? No, no, I didn't. Someone else. No, Neil. I'm just saying this person. Uh -huh. uh, what is this? But was he in, but he listed this, but did he really, this person or he or she really contribute to Cozy? Made a bunch of uh, documentation PRs, um, uh, so you know deployment. Oh, okay. So can, can you can you just check what is this membership is about? It's probably like a general thing. It's not really specific. This so is, okay. can I look look at the, the, the yeah the member what okay Kubernetes okay yeah All so right. this is a general kind of uh, thing. So he this person just mentioned everything he or she has done. So that's why I don't think he, she's trying to become, uh, this is the membership for Kubernetes. This is like the overall org. So it's not like become an approver or a reviewer in Cozy at all. Well, uh, that's what I thought originally, but then um, see, uh, when, um, you know, uh, we just, you know, Chris joined, uh, he, he just got, uh, uh, he basically wrote the same thing. Um, and, and he has like LGTM merge privileges on, on all the Cozy projects. Cool. Krish, uh, let me let me pull that up. Um, really? Yeah. Who approved and that? that? No, uh, Krish, I approved it. So so in the okay. sense, I only said plus one here, but I didn't specifically say, um, you know, for these projects. Uh, but the projects that were listed. But I thought on you have to. I thought you have to actually submit PRs on each project, right? Well, yeah, in order to become a member, but I think. You have to actually, this person have to submit PR to 
like the controller, sidecar, adapter, each project become approved there, right? Well, you, you approve it, then you are fine. That since you are fine, then I'm, I don't have Yeah, but yeah. is okay. Yeah, um, I'm okay. I, I don't think, think that, but but I don't think that person is trying to become approved. Did, did that person trying to submit PR? Yeah, yeah, they've been trying to submit PRs. Uh, however, uh, with Krish, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if he's there, he can also confirm this. Uh, so he's just said these are the projects he's involved with, but now he can LGTM. I, I want that for Krish. Uh, so oh, I, LG, okay, LGTM is really just like a, a member. So actually, if you are a member of Kubernetes dash six, then uh -huh. you can LGTM. Yeah. Any project? Yeah, any project under Kubernetes six, then you can LGTM basically. You don't have to be like a in that okay. owner's file to do okay. LGTM. Yeah. Okay, but uh, okay. So right now, if anyone LGTMs, uh, a PR can be approved. By the way, that's okay. Uh, right? Can can that can be approved? It cannot be approved, right? Well, uh, right now it can. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Oh, because you because unless if you are already approver. So if you are already approver, then because that person has to be in the owner's file in order to approve that PR, right? That's what I would think, but that, that wasn't yeah. the case right now. Can, can, uh, so, can, can you show me example? Yeah. I'm, I'm not getting what you're... Yeah, so I'll show you this one uh, in the okay. provisional sidecar. Okay, I added this uh, sample driver YAML file and... Uh, this is you or who, who is this? This is you. My PR. Yeah, yeah, if it's you, it is pop, it is correct. Anyone who give you your LGTM, <laughs> you'll be merged. Okay. <laughs> because you already have an approver, right? I see, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's because it's you. But if this is somebody that, that is not a prover, then that's not a case. So actually, the, whoever uh, uh, give you a prover should be careful, right? Because if you actually don't want this to be approved that quickly, then maybe you should add a hold there. <laughs> I'm not sure what is your intention for this particular. No, here I, I was fine with it. I just couldn't, okay. I didn't understand. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's in, in general, it's like that, right? So that's why they are actually sometimes a little bit hesitant of uh, Mm -hmm. uh, giving you the membership, but once you get the membership, it's actually, you know, you can LGTM any repos under mm -hmm. Kubernetes six if you are, you know, if you are a member under Kubernetes six, right? Understood. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All so right. basically, yeah, any repo under that org, you will have L LGTM um, okay. power, and then you know, if it's already approved, then yeah, that, that will just uh, merge it. So sometimes yeah. you may want to want to careful want to be careful if you want someone to check it before. It's approved, then you probably want to add a hold if that's the case. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. That's Got it. yeah, yeah. Understood. Okay. Okay, that's good. So um, yeah, so that's so that you know you don't have someone else approving it. That's what you're saying. Um, all right. So so the next thing is um, so so while working with uh, uh, some of the vendors, uh, another thing that uh, was brought up, and this is a very important concern, uh, was that uh, uh, we don't have an automated CI mechanism to push the latest builds onto uh, the registry that we're using. So for that, Tejas came up with a brilliant idea uh, and I'll let him uh, explain that further. Um, Tejas? Hey, um, I'll just share my screen. Mm -hmm. oh, can you give me permissions? Um, I don't know if I can. Shing might be able to. Oh, okay, you want me to uh, make it, uh, who is that, Tejas? Yeah. Okay. All right, try it now. Okay. All right. Um, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So basically the problem we were trying to solve was, you know, having a container image built uh, periodically from our master branch from, you know, I think we have four container images right now. Uh, and so we, I, I've created this repo here, CI in the container object storage interface organization and added a couple of GitHub workflows. So all these workflows do is basically they're scheduled to run every day at midnight. Uh, they check out the repo master branch or main branch um, and they'll build the container and push the container uh, to Quay. Uh, that's where we are hosting our uh, images right now, you know, in the pre-alpha state uh, until we basically push where the official images go um, right around alpha. So we have, uh, you know, there's a couple of minor changes in the make file as we build this, but right now, like, so I set this up yesterday and if we go look at the images, um, 
in Quay. Uh, and this is the default in our customized template right now. Um, so I'll go to adapter here. So you can see this was built uh, 18 hours uh, ago. Um, so now every day at midnight, um, UTC uh, will basically build out a new Canary image and push it to these repos. Um, so this, so we have controller building in this workflow, adapter in a separate workflow, and the provisioner and sidecar images uh, building in a separate workflow. So uh, one of the main reasons we went to the outside the org repository was because uh, we couldn't really do uh, deployment through our CI process um, because one is we need to get uh, an image um, approved. Like I think we need to be alpha before we can start pushing images through through Prow. Um, and so, uh, but what people still want to try out, people still want the latest build. And this is our uh, temporary workaround. Yeah, and uh, you know, Sid or others could not configure secrets on the repo in the uh, Kubernetes SIG org. So we yeah. basically set this workflow up here. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's fairly straightforward, um, but you know, this will give us a new image every day, uh, at least one image. The actions are also set up to run manually if needed. So, you know, um, whoever has access to the org can go and kick off the workflow from the UI uh, or through GitHub API. And can you see the builds? Uh, can anyone see the builds? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure. Uh, not sure if the workflow UI oh. is available if you're not logged in. I see. Log out. Yeah, actually. So now I'm logged out and, and the actions and the logs are available. Okay. Oh, no, wait, no. So the logs, detail logs are not available if you're not logged in, but you can see that, yeah, it ran. Okay. Yeah, sign in view logs. I see, okay. Okay, good to know. Uh, but anyways, uh, I think this provides a, a good uh, uh, stopgap measure uh, while we continue uh, working towards alpha. Talking about going towards alpha, uh, I want to uh, quickly go through um, Jeff's proposal again and make a decision because um, in terms of API review, I think we've addressed uh, pretty much everything that's, that was asked of us. Um, the one thing uh, we have still uh, not answered was Ben's question from last week, which is how do we uh, address sharing buckets across Kubernetes clusters? So either Ben can start by asking the question or Jeff can start by uh, explaining what he's uh, come up with. Whoever wants to go first. I've made an update to the diagram for scale out type multi cluster, which I just share screen. Could you share your screen? Sure. So you scroll up, that's the same within a cluster, and scrolling down in this document. Uh, the links in um, Six Storage Cozy. I've got some notes about multi-cluster. It was a good exercise. I didn't get to spend much time on this because of other work, but um, um, it's the same diagram, but it's it's the point of view is scale out multi-cluster where it's brownfield sharing of a, a common backend bucket. Um, the pail in this bucket, the abstraction is bucket one. That's the bucket instance in cluster two, um, and how did you, and, and, and what, how do we get to this cluster two and what, what's not good about it? Um, and you get to it just like you would anything. You clone user resources so they can be, the idea is to clone user resources and a minimal number of cluster resources. Well, uh, so, so Jeff, quick question there. We just need to create a, a, a bucket object in the new cluster, right? Like, because in the, in the new cluster, the BARs, the BAs, and all that would be created on demand, uh, but wouldn't have to be preemptively created. Like we don't want the same. So the you still you 
you want to copy BACs to the new cluster. Okay, I see. You want to copy bucket one to the new cluster. If, if there's an issue with this, you may need to copy bucket classes. I don't know. But no, we're some, not. So why do we need to copy those? Clusters that are copied to cluster two. Um, it's, it's always done this way um, in, in federation and multi-cluster. But you want the two, you want Cozy to automate as much as it is able to. But Cozy can't automate the creation of BARs. So well, uh, I'm I'm questioning if we do we need to automate that even. So so I, I I'm not sure if we need to copy BCs and BACs. Um, so if you're going to reference them. So. So we said uh, in the case of, uh, I think Ben <clears throat> Ben also was mentioning this, in case of a uh, sharing across clusters or uh, it can be considered the same as static brownfield, wherein uh, a bucket exists outside uh, and on this bucket, you cannot perform life cycle operations, but you can perform access and deny operations. Um, in such a bucket, uh, we should, uh, you know, I was thinking more like an admin would go manually create this bucket uh, and uh, it would have some fields in there to denote that this is static brown field. Um, and, and that's about it. It, it doesn't need a BC. Um, it, it doesn't need preset BAC, uh, you know, bucket accesses on it. Um, uh, anytime a bucket access is required, I mean, access is required on the bucket, a user would go create a bucket access object pointing to that bucket. Yeah, I, I agree. You, you definitely don't need the BC. You will need a BAC to be mm -hmm. able to create new bucket accesses, but it doesn't have to bear any resemblance to the one on the original cluster. Mm -hmm. It could be entirely new and different. It could be, but but it could also be what exactly what was on cluster one. I mean, it would be you right, but if it, it create a new one, but if if it was, it would be for the reason that you wanted your BACs to be the same across all your clusters and you would have set that up ahead of time anyways. And the provisioner is the same. I mean, so, right. Uh, you, you, you could of course make everything different on cluster two. You could even have a different provisioner, but you know, it, it seems more likely that you would be using the same provisioner. Yeah, but provisioner itself is, is stateless. Like there's no concept of the same provisioner. Right. It's an instance of the same provision. I mean, you're going to be wanting to invoke, the driver's going to want to be the same code that was on cluster two. Cluster one and two would probably be the same driver. Uh, how, how does that factor into any of this? It, it, the BAC references the driver, but the BA can also, right? BAC does not reference the driver. The BC does. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the driver would be in the bucket yeah right. it would get BAC copied to the bucket interested. if you look at the cap the bac references the provisioner just like the bc so they both reference the provisioner today well the cap but, should be up go ahead do it ben well, you should I was gonna say, what, what would you do if they didn't match between the bac and the b right like how would you handle that when creating a, new, a bar if they were well, not they the same i mean for instance if your driver only handled greenfield so just create and delete requests that's all it did then that driver could be different from a bac driver that did grant and revoke right but, but, you it, but you could you could conceptually but, do that but do we do we stamp the the provisioner on the bucket object when it gets created yes okay because so so then when you if you take one of these, you can't have two it, different ones, right? Yeah, if but you if you end up in a brownfield scenario where you're just manifesting a bucket out of whole cloth, and uh, you have to put a you have to put something in that provisioner field, and if if the system is just going to ignore it and use the one on the the BAC, that feels weird. But if well, it's going to look at it, yeah. then it has to then it, you have to have some precedence. Like which one do you look at if there's well, two the different? The BA may have the provisioner from the BAC, and the B has the provisioner from the BC. I don't, so why do we have so many sources of truth? Why not just leave it in the bucket? Yeah, so somebody has to be the source of truth or you need a precedence system in an in a explanation well, that makes sense. <laughs> I, I think it makes sense to just leave it in the bucket because one thing I know I see between moving between clusters um, is, is 
you know, you could use a different provisioner if, if you wanted. Uh, that would still be able to uh, talk the S3 API or whatever to get you the privileges. Right. So, but if there was if there was stuff in your bucket object that was stamped on it by the original provisioner, mm -hmm. and there's if, if you have two different, I haven't really thought this through, but if you have two different provisioners that both more or less do S3 compatible things, but with proprietary extensions, mm -hmm. would those would the contents of those proprietary extensions bleed into the bucket object? No. Such, no. 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 Definitely no. So, so this is a static brownfield case. The admins manually creating this bucket for now, um, and and they would choose what fields are copied through, copied over, and and uh, again uh, we should document this very well, saying that this this static brownfield uh, does not manage the lifecycle of the bucket. It can only, you know, grant and revoke privileges. So, so uh, just for that purpose. I'm not sure we need we need proprietary fields. Well, so, so, so this is static brownfield has meant driverless. Is that how you're using it? Not really driverless. Right. We still need to do uh, you know revoke and grant. Okay. So what what makes it different than regular brownfield? Regular brownfield. Uh, we talked about that deletion uh, lifecycle, right? Like uh, you you have references to. Um, you know, even other namespaces that are using this bucket, uh, uh, and uh, regular brownfield uh, is not manually created either. And and in regular brownfield, we can, uh, you know, when, when a BAR accessing that bucket goes away, we we update the references. Um, you said it's like, not manually created. What are you referring to? What resource? The bucket itself. The the bucket is cloned by. By the admin, or or is the bucket cloned by? There's, cloning? there's no cloning. I don't know what you mean by cloning. But, you know, he, he's, so you you guys are confusing the actual bucket on the storage system versus the bucket object in Kubernetes. Okay. I'm referring I, to the bucket resource, the bucket abstraction. Me too. Okay, so let's clarify this. Um, so, so Jeff, what is your question? I'm, I'm not able to follow. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find out the difference between static brownfield, driverless, and regular brownfield. Okay, so let's say you have a bucket created outside of Cozy. It's it's existed forever, and now you want to start using it using the Cozy uh, uh, model. Right? You know, you just want to specify. Um, uh, you know, you want you want to use it just like you use all of the cozy buckets. Um, specify in the part spec uh, somewhere that uh, uh, you know you need a bucket, uh, and and you somehow reference this bucket um, by referencing to the BAR. So, uh, in that case, if an admin wants to bring that bucket uh, into the cluster, they would be able to do it by creating the bucket object by hand. That's what I mean by static ground field. Okay, and in in the in today's re regular or dynamic brownfield, Cozy is doing the, the clone of the bees for brownfield? In, in today's, um, so I'm talking about all of this uh, in the context of your proposal, which we have right in front of us right now. I understand, but I'm trying to ask what, what do we do today for brownfield? Does Cozy clone the bee or does an administrator manually create the bee for brownfield today? I think it's the in ladder. normal brownfields, dynamic brownfield. So, so Cozy can do the cloning. That's what we said we would do. Okay. So the plan is Cozy would do the cloning of bees for namespace sharing, brownfield namespace sharing mm -hmm. across namespaces. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. So then, it, so in your view, then static brownfield means Cozy's not cloning the bees. Mm -hmm. uh, an admin is creating a bee. Uh, to represent a backend bucket mm -hmm. uh, and then making that be known to a user who references, references it in a BR. BAR, yeah. A BAR. Mm -hmm. With this, with the proposal in front of people, but a BR in today's design based on the cap. Right. I mean, this proposal here is eliminating BRs for Brownfield, but the current right. design still has BRs for Brownfield. Right, right, right. right. Okay. In the context of the old model, yes. So this, um, 
Okay, so I understand that term now. Um, uh, where was I going with that? So you were saying, okay, so now it makes sense. And uh, yes, but, but um, I mean, we could do that. We do that uh, anytime we want with either design, we can do this static round field, right? Right. So uh, my whole point was, if we were to go down your route, the whole proposal that you have, um, sharing across namespace or sharing across clusters uh, is not a no-go. We can we can definitely address it, and we even have a path to address it, um, and we can we can actually implement it when when the time is right. Yeah, That's I want to point out something because maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, I didn't get much time to work on this, but um, when I drew the diagram that you can see now, I hope what, with cluster two, you can see that it's different from the diagram above. Um, and what's different is that yeah. there is no BRs anymore because this proposal says we don't need BRs for Brownfield. We just need BARs, that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with a scale out to cluster two or including cluster two into the use of a bucket, a back-end bucket, we, we don't need BRs because it's a, they're Brownfield use cases or even static Brownfield like Sid mm -hmm. says. And so there's a difference which might matter and it might not be, uh, it sit well with some folks. And so um, the exercise was useful because I hadn't recognized that part of it. Well, I, I don't see a big problem here to be honest because uh, we, we're making a huge improvement in, in, in not having to make copies of the bucket. A little bit of uh, asymmetry is totally fine if you ask me. Uh, as long as we're not getting into weird cycles and, and uh, you know, recursions that, that don't end. Um, yeah. 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 So, so I, I think you're talking about the asymmetry, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's totally understandable. Actually. I don't, I don't think it, it's causing a huge confusion. I'm not sure what anyone would say against it. Simply saying asymmetry is bad. I don't think is acceptable. Um, because, because in some cases you need it, because you know the the user usage patterns are different between uh, greenfield and brownfield of any type. Yeah. So this diagram, in my view at least, accurately represents uh, a new cluster being brought up that would reference the same backend bucket. Um, like I've said, there may be some omissions here or, or errors because I didn't get to think about it too deeply over the weekend. Mm -hmm. I think, I, to be honest, I think we can move forward with this, but I want others also to, uh, I, I want to make sure others also uh, are on the same page. Uh, and if not, I want to understand why, see if we can address it. So Ben, what are your thoughts? Um, I don't have any issues with with, the, with this. I, I'm, I'm still, trying to mm -hmm. figure out where the, where the friction is. Yeah, I, 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 I was kind of following your discussion, but yeah, this doesn't bother me, the, the, the not having a BR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the one, yeah. Okay. So I, 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 want, I want to know what the BAR object looks like in this model, because it's got to have some sort of an optional thing, right? either it points to a bucket or points to a BR. Uh, so you yes. have to have two fields or something or. Yeah, there would be both fields and admission controller or someone um, enforces mutual exclusivity, right? Yeah, yeah, so that, that's how it works with snapshots, I think. And, and it's a good good model. Um, it's good to know. Okay, but, but getting back, so where I kind of lost the thread was back when we were talking about the provisioner. Um, mm -hmm. So the bucket has a provisioner on it, and you're saying the BAC can also have a provisioner on it, but yeah. but why? The cap. Huh? No, no, the cap cap we can update if needed. Uh, it, I think. Right, it could be the cap has gotten stale in that area. Um, right. Well, I, I'm asking so forgetting about the cap. Like, yeah. if we had the option to take it out of the BAC, would we do that? Um, because or is it adding some value that I can't see? It's adding value in Brownfield because if there's no BR, then there's no BC needed. Right, and, but, but there, there's still a B, which yeah, still has the provisioner. Okay. What right? 
but but we auto, we automatically yes we have a B, but uh, in Brownfield yeah yeah then I think what you're saying makes sense actually um, I keep uh, switching between the two models, um, but in this current proposal here in Brownfield all we need is a BAR and the BAR points to a B and the B contains the provision or we're done. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I think the implementation is is like that. We don't have uh, the provision. I think we removed it quite a while back, uh, saying we didn't need it. Hey, excuse yeah. me, guys. Uh, time check. Do you suppose you yeah. to switch yeah. to the second part? <laughs> yeah, let's do the second part. Th thanks for reminding us, Shing. So, okay. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think I think we should go forward to the proposal. I don't I don't see any major issues with it. And if we do run into issues, I think we should you know we can always address them. Um, so uh, let's let's start with the officers. Um, so I want to open up uh, you know questions from everyone. Um, what we can do is we can we can look at the code. We can look at uh, how to deploy. You can you can ask me or anyone else here uh, why we've made the decisions we've made in the code, uh, stuff like that. And and also I can help you get started uh, with any uh, if you want to contribute or have any questions with. Uh, what we've been trying to do with Cozy. All right, if nobody has a question, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start showing you the code and running this. And when you see it, you'll probably have questions about why I've done things the way I've done it. So I'm going to log in from my uh, Linux machine. Give me one second. Okay, so um, Shing, uh, can I get uh, share permissions on the other uh, login? Uh, which login? You have two? Yeah, I have two. <laughs> okay. So the one that, that doesn't have uh, 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 All know, right, my, now. yeah, I, I can do it now. Okay, cool. All right, so let's, uh, Okay, can you all see my terminal? And is the text size big enough for you to follow? Yes and yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, Viani, um, I remember last we talked, uh, there was uh, there was a there was an issue with the uh, 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 what was it? Was it with uh, mounting the bucket into the pod? What was it? Oh, uh, hi. First, uh, hey. th there was uh, multiple issues. <clears throat> um, there was a name first. There was a namespace issue, like uh, right, right, yeah. It was uh, suffixed by something like uh, dash dev something, and mm -hmm. in the code, and uh, I had to change that and recompile mm -hmm. to make it working. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, I, I could create the bucket and all, and uh, everything was fine. So the bucket was created in in IO. Mm -hmm. But it was not the second part of the mounting in the in the container uh, does not work, right? I see. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I think it's. It seems like it's not finished. Got it. Okay. Uh, I I could do it manually. Mm -hmm. uh, so l l let me find. Uh, prepare this. I need to log on my cluster. But basically, um, if you go into the source folder, can you go into the the Example folder where you, where you have all the CRDs and stuff. The I see. Yeah, I do. Um, wait, it was that was in the controller? Yeah. So controller and uh, in deploy. No, no. I think samples or example something like. That. Okay, so find our grab um, example. No. Um, All right, let me connect to my cluster. Well, I know, I know what you're talking about. There's a br.yaml. Um, 
grepr.yaml, something like that. Uh, there it is. It's hmm. a bucket. Yeah, there is a bucket class. There is a bucket. There is a. I'm not sure where it is, but yeah. So, so what was the issue there? Let's. Uh, let's... I think it's in the. Uh, API. CSI adapter. Okay, so let's go in there. Okay. Ls uh, resources. I see. Okay. There it is. Okay. Yeah, but it's 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 quite incomplete compared to. The others. So let, let, let me connect on my on my system. Basically. Okay, understood. Okay, so let's try to do that then. So let us try to uh, deploy uh, the three projects and uh, see how far we get. So the deployment steps. Uh, so I'm going to follow it just as someone who's new to this project would. So I'm going to start by going to the docs. Um, let's see, github.com. Kubernetes six and uh, API deployment guide. Okay, so these four steps should get me cozy running. Okay, so that itself doesn't work. Uh, so Tejas, are you noting these things? So, um, okay, so it's looking for a project that it can't find. Um, I was under the impression it'll, it'll go look at uh, GitHub. So, so, uh, so Tejas, are you there? Yeah, so uh, you, you cannot do 6.kts.io. Uh, you'll have to do uh, the full path. Um, so that's something that needs to be fixed. Um, if, if, okay, so this is already running. I have the uh, sidecar running and I probably also have the controller running. Okay, already exists. So this is good. So, um, Krish, are you are you here? Hey, Krish, uh, I don't want to forget. So uh, uh, I want to ask you for a favor. Could you please uh, add issues for the things that we find as problems here? Sure. Give me a second. Thank let you. Me, let me get that open. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So. So that means we should be able to create bucket objects. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, create a bunch of bucket objects. So here, um, the controller, I had some uh, bucket requests uh, written down. So I'm gonna go here. Um, all right, so let me clean up what I already have. Uh, delete dash F, uh, delete uh, buckets dash dash R. And let me open up uh, the bucket request that I had used earlier. So this is a very simple bucket request. Um, it just has a name and a bucket class name. And the bucket class has a pointer to the provisioner and it simply just sets the signature version. So this is a very bare bones kind of test. Uh, the test is just going to be, uh, does it create a bucket? And then um, after that, does it grant access to that bucket? So I haven't done this test with the latest version of the code. And what we've deployed right now is the latest version of the code. So let's see how it goes. Um, so I'm gonna do kubectl create. Okay, bucket class already exists, that's fine. So let's see, kubectl get PR, no, bucket, bucket requests. All right, 11 seconds ago, test two was created. 
And let me see if buckets. 16 seconds ago, there's a bucket created. It gets created by this UUID. I'll show you YAML. Oh, and this is hard to read. Just to make it easier to read. Okay, so a bucket has been created, pointing to the bucket class. Uh, the provision has been copied over, the retention policy is retained. Um, the UUID is, okay, this is pointing to the bucket request. So, okay, so if I understand correctly, the bucket name is the UUID of the bucket request, right? I thought it was supposed to have a BR dash prefix in front of it. When I asked a little while ago about what the bucket name was composed of, I thought uh -huh. the answer was BR dash U UID. Um, yeah, and, 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 and it was supposed to be if the BR is, uh, if there's no bucket prefix, then it creates a bucket by BR dash, right? I think that's what we said. Let, let's, let's, let's see why okay. it is. I'm not talking about the name of a backend bucket. I'm talking about the name of the bucket instance. I know, I know. I'm talking about the same thing. Okay. So I'm looking at the bucket request controller. Jeff, can you mute yourself, please? I, I, um, it's kind of uh, a lot of echo. Sorry. Okay. So when we create the bucket name, okay, here is where we create the bucket name. This is the logic. Uh, we see if the bucket, okay, we first start with the bucket prefix. Um, if the bucket prefix exists, then we do bucket prefix dash UUID. If the bucket prefix doesn't exist, we're supposed to do BR dash. I mean, yeah, this would work. The string concatenation would work. So let's just, okay. So, so Jeff, it seems like there was a break in logic here. Good catch. This would fix it. So this is another fix that needs to be made. Um, Krish, are you making note of this also? Yeah, let me add an issue to the, the sidecar for this, right? Mm -hmm. Where's in the controller? It's a controller, never mind. Controller, yeah. All right, so coming back to the bucket, uh, we have the protocol set correctly uh, and we have uh, the protocol field set correctly. And uh, yeah, the other things look good. Uh, aren't we getting rid of anonymous access mode? Seed, uh, uh, mm -hmm. can you go into the, 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 same, the CSI? Um... Adapter? Uh, yeah, CSI adapter folder, yeah. So it's, it's called sample, right? Okay. Oh, there, you... is, there is a folder, yeah, there is a folder called sample. Sample, okay. Can you can you go inside? Yeah. Under Since... resources? Okay. Wait. Yeah, but it's not, you, you don't have it. You might have to pull, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm far behind, I guess. Oh, yeah, okay, so. Mm -hmm. uh, CD sample, yeah. You see, um, so you you can create a bucket and it, it will automatically call the right uh, sidecar driver and all. So that that works, mm -hmm. and you end up with a bucket uh, physically created uh, in Minio. Mm -hmm. But then for the pod, so the pod is supposed to do the bucket access request, right? Right. Yes, it's supposed it, to use that to mount. Yes. It doesn't work, so you have to do it uh, by hand. And you, you also have to create the secret by hand. I, I, I suppose the developer uh, creates the secret.yaml to in the meantime, because the development mm -hmm. is not done. It should be automated, actually. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> but I had to create a bucket access request uh, basically to, to do a create the chef uh, mm -hmm. or bucket access request.yaml and the secret.yaml as well. And then I could uh, have my pod uh, mounting the credentials. So I could. But, see. So the bucket access request would have to be created man manually. That is correct. Oh, right. But I had to create the secret by myself. I, I don't that's think it's not, correct. Yeah, that is <laughs> that's not right. So, so uh, there is a, something, some kind of, there is a link 
which is broken. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you create the secret by hand, mm -hmm. uh, indeed, uh, in my pod, I could see the, the volume properly mounted. Okay. With, with the bucket credentials filled up. Okay, understood. So and CSI then, adapter is then more, okay. So CSI adapter, if there's a secret, it's able to mount it. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I had to create the secret by myself. Or is it there, yeah. either it's broken or it's not finished? Not very clear. Understood. Okay. So here's That's the probably a problem with the sidecar, right? Yeah. I, I think we, we discussed this, right, Chris? Was that you? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So this secret, um, so Rob, uh, when, when he was still contributing, um, there was, I think there was an assumption saying that secret should always be in the objects in the namespace called object storage system. I can't quite remember having this conversation, but, but it was hard coded this way. And there was no check to see if the namespace already existed. And um, right now we should not be doing this. Right now what we should do is uh, we should just create the secret in the same namespace as the, as the sidecar. Because what we've said is the sidecar is going to run in this, uh, you know, in, for, for every vendor, um, the admin can decide to run the sidecar in, in their own namespace. Correct. Right. So if that's the case, the secrets for that provisioner should also reside in that namespace, wouldn't you, you would think, right? That's what I thought all along, Sid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but uh, the current implementation doesn't do that correctly. And then the node adapter, the C cozy node adapter um, basically writes that secret from the provisioner's namespace into the uh, pod workspace, mm -hmm. uh, workspace uh, amount inside the pod in the CSI driver, right? Right, right. That's how it's, uh, Krish, where did you get the secret from when you wrote the node adapter? Uh, it just uses the bucket access, I believe, to get a reference to the secret, if I remember correctly. Got it. There's another bug here. Um, so, uh, so, he, so what we do is we came up with the concept of a principle. The principle was supposed to be the user ID for whom the access is granted and from whom the access is revoked. Uh, and, and this logic seems very weird, weird to me. So what it says is um, earlier we had this concept where uh, uh, an admin or user could want, you know, could ask for a request um, for a specific user that already existed. Uh, but, but this was way back. And uh, later on, uh, I was like, uh, we, we should not be doing that. We, we should create credentials every time um, rather than reusing credentials from a user that was previously created. And I think that's the decision we went with. Um, so if that's the case, uh, this principle can never be specified. So there's no need to check if it's empty. Here, what we do is we check if it's empty and we check if uh, service account is empty. And only if both are true, then we go ahead and uh, update the principle. I don't know what that exactly does. So um, yeah, Rob wrote a bunch of this code. So, so this needs to be fixed because what I can tell from here is this update principle never happens. So once a bucket access gets created, um, that, that principle field is never filled in, which is the, which is the, uh, uh, um, which is what I saw. So essentially this, this should not be here. Are you going to open a PR with this fix or should I uh, make a note of it? No, make a note of it in the issue. Yeah, just make a note of it uh, because uh, I think I think there's more to it than just that. Um, we need to test and make sure some some other cases are also not messed up. Um, and, and also, you know, this needs to be fixed. This this hard coding it to a yeah, special. That one's been created. Okay. That issue. Okay. Okay. So let's quickly now go and see. Um, if the bucket was actually created. So we created a bucket object earlier, 10 minutes ago, I want to go see if the bucket is actually, you know, it exists. Okay, so menu is not running. Um, 
so let's see let me let me actually start menu uh, uh, kubectl create dash f all right so this should have a uh, menu running kubectl the pods default namespace yeah there just started okay and there's a service that would point to that pod so we should be able to start seeing um, the buckets being created there. So uh, let me see what the provisioner sidecar says. Uh, kubectl get ns. Kubectl get pods dash n. That. Logs of this one. And uh, I want to look at the driver logs. Okay, so so it kept failing because it couldn't uh, it couldn't talk to the backend. And then uh, about a minute ago, when we just created it, uh, it successfully created the backend bucket. Okay, so here's another problem, and and I noticed this before. Uh, it calls bucket create multiple times. Uh, you know, it's item important in the back end, so it's fine. Oh no, never mind. Okay, so two buckets, three buckets have been created. Is that right? So that doesn't support item important. Every time you get the same request, you keep creating. Well, the menu does. No, it looks like there's three separate, like there's three separate buckets. buckets. Yeah, but we, we, oh, okay. we shouldn't have it though. They're right, three separate, but don't we want just one in this example? Yeah, we should have only one. Oh, look at that. Okay, so I, I saw this before. It constantly keeps pushing requests. So, but then- I, I, I saw it as well. <laughs> this is wrong. But, but, but in my case, it's using the same uh, <clears throat> ID. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> it works because it's item potent. <laughs> yeah. oh, but you in your case, it's- you same, <laughs> same name are coming back with the same, I'm, I'm not getting how many, there's only one bucket object. Okay. If I do get buckets, there's only one. But then there were three names? Or yes. So uh, uh, I, think I, know, <laughs> I think I know why. So so again, with the previous implementation. So Chris, make sure you make a note of this. Um, so what Rob did was he was uh, generating the bucket name on the fly. So um, so then what he does is he does a find on them. So this was, this was, this logic is wrong. Uh, so what he does is on a bucket request, when you get a bucket object, um, he generates a name, he generates a UUID for that bucket. And then he tries to create a bucket by that name. Then uh, say on a sync call, the same request comes in for whatever reason, then he does a find on them. So he lists all the buckets to see if a bucket by that new UUID that was generated exists. It's never going to exist. So it ends up constantly creating buckets. And if you notice, I think it'll happen exactly 30 seconds away. One minute, 30 seconds away, I see. Which is the same period. So it's good. We found we found three bucks. So this was this was one of the goals of uh, uh, well, you know this this office hours. I, I wanted to sit with everyone and uh, find the bugs in front of the developers who are writing the code so that we can we can understand what's wrong and also we can, we can go and fix it. So, so we're out of time. Um, before Thursday, I think we can fix these things. Uh, Krish uh, and Ashrini, are you there? Yeah, it's okay, we, we can fix it. Like I can, I can push out the code for this. And next week, mm -hmm. uh, or two weeks from now, when we do the uh, uh, office hours again, uh, I want to get it to a position where the bucket access uh, is what we look into, not, not this bucket creation anymore. Uh, this should just work. Uh, so, so Krish and whoever other else is here who's writing code, that's that's the goal I want to set. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. So to, today, if you create the bucket uh, access request. Mm -hmm. Will it work or not? Uh, to be honest, uh, uh, 
we've been we've been changing the design for a while yeah so i'm not entirely sure um so so yeah this is this is i think this is one of the best ways to make sure that uh, uh, i get to see what's going on so I, i'm trying it out live request yes yeah and i haven't seen the file so let's see oh i created the bucket access request now okay and now you need to to launch your pod okay so what does it say uh it does that so it should point to a bucket right or a bucket request okay Uh, our bucket request name is different and this has a status already all right so we need to fix this status should be set later on okay so let's do that kubectl create dash f bucket access class okay and then bucket access request okay so this is okay at bucket access request um and then create Okay so for this bucket access request we should get a bucket access created correctly not yet so just another time check we're at the top of the hour yeah right yeah up. this is good this is uh, yeah uh, time is up um, thank you everyone uh, let's continue on thursday uh, i want to make i want to go forward with the decision that we made uh, with jeff's proposal um, so jeff please update the cap and uh, let's start the api review process again Yes, I'll do that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Talk to you all on Thursday. Bye. Bye. Thank you.